Well, hello everyone. A very warm welcome uh, to yet another episode of the Business Growth Mastery Show, where we bring to you six, seven, and eight-figure entrepreneurs to share their breakthroughs as well as their journey to success. So you too can learn from that success, emulate it, and carry out all the strategies that they have done to gain the success in your business. Today, I'm absolutely delighted to have with us Raven Blair Glover, the talk show maven, or the trusted expert in her field. She has been pretty impressive and has a pretty impressive story that I can't wait to share with you. But before I let her loose to give her all the tricks and trips and the gems that she's got for you, let me tell you a little bit about her. She is a former CNN, CBS radio personality and celebrity interviewer an award-winning talk show host, columnist, speaker, and author of this wonderful book called Talk Show Magic, which is jam-packed with tips on how you can be an irresistible talk show host, and most importantly, how you can make a business from it, which is where she got known as the queen of interview conversion. Yep, I said the queen of interview conversion. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you can see her crown. Say something, um, uh, uh, Raven, and put that crown back on so that they can see you on screen for a moment. There the queen. You are, the queen of interview. <laughs> and I'm sure you're going to agree that's quite a title. And after many years of searching for her purpose, she is absolutely fulfilling her lifetime dream. But this is not an overnight success story that we're sharing with you today. This is not about a you know get quick get rich quick story either. This was a re dream that was 20 years in the making and was realized in 2006 when, her f when she broadcast her first radio show from her kitchen table. Yeah, I did say the kitchen table, proving firstly that you can, you know, your voice can pave the way to success as did hers, if that's what you want to do. And secondly, that you can start from pretty humble be beginnings and that you don't need all the paraphernalia that you often hear about in order to start a business or lots of fancy platforms in her case in terms of um, a radio show in order to start. So, you know, once again, this is a clear story of a breakthrough and we're going, that's going to unfold in front of you as we speak to Raven um, as we go over to in a moment. But let me just tell you a little bit more about her that she has been fortunate enough to have interviewed some of the most influential business leaders, thought leaders, multi-millionaire celebrities, as well as ordinary people with some extraordinary success stories. But her sort of uh, catalogue of people that she has interviewed includes people like Jack Canfield, America's number one success coach, in case no one knew, Les Brown, international motivational speaker, Alex Mendozian, marketing genius, Ali Brown, self-made millionaire, and of course, Lisa Sasevich, that many of you will have heard of, the queen of sales conversion and an award-winning multimillionaire business owner. And that's just to name a few of the people that she has been fortunate enough to have interviewed. Um, and this is what some of them have said about her. Jack Canfield has said, I've appeared on more than a thousand radio shows in the past 25 years, and my time with Raven was one of the most enjoyable ever. What a brilliant compliment. He also described her as one of the best radio show interviewers on the planet. Well, that's endorsement indeed. Others have talked about Raven's strategies and techniques that have created thousands of dollars of value to their business, to their interviewing business. So she's not just being recognized as a great interviewer and a talk show host, which in itself is a great um, skill, but for her ability to help business owners to monetize and create businesses from their shows. So without further ado, let's meet Raven, <laughs> the maven. <laughs> Raven, a very, very warm welcome. Delighted to have yeah. you. Today. Thank you so much. I really I so appreciate you. And I want to applaud you for all the great work you're doing. Let's give you a hand because you are you. doing some amazing things. This series is just awesome. And I know 
you, 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 and you, each and every one of you are going to get so much from the different speakers. And I feel blessed that you consider me and ask me to be one of your speakers. So thank you. And thank your audience so much for tuning in today because they could be doing a lot of different things. Glad oh, to be we, here. Mark. We are delighted to have you. Why don't we start by you sharing your very unconventional story, um, which is what I was saying to people, you know, 20 years in the making, etc. And yeah. tell us what inspired you to become what you are today? What's so unconventional? What inspired you? Yeah, thank you for asking me that. And, you know, I love to have the opportunity to share my story because my story is um, a story of getting through your stuff, you know, making that U-turn mm -hmm. and finding your right path in life that's fit for you. So you can be in your elements, you can change lives. So my story started right here is where I made my U-turn in my life. Wow. Right? At Methodist Hospital. Yes, in Houston, Texas. My mother, here's a picture of my mom and I, a few years before that happened, maybe 10 years before she got ill. That's her. That's so, lovely. Yeah, she is gorgeous. Her name was Emily. And so um, she told us like the night before that she had to go in the hospital and have a serious surgery. And as she was in the Methodist hospital, things went good for the surgery. But then right afterwards, they noticed that, you know, her right leg was not moving. So they didn't want her to go into, I forget if it was the right or left, whichever one affects the heart. Mm -hmm. And so they had to rush her back in there. And um, she ended up being in the ICU unit for three whole weeks, three wow. weeks. And um, I was in the chapel. And the chapel, if you look to the right, it was like not on the first floor, but maybe I think on the second or mezzanine area, right over around here. And I just want to hear the voice inside me. God, I choose to feel, I feel like it was God saying, hey, you know, your mother is going to be okay. She's going to be okay. She's going to be different. But uh, she's going to she's gonna be able to, she's going to go home. She was different. She was in the ICU unit for three weeks. When she left, she was in the wheelchair. Oh. Um, but during that time, the voice inside me told me, you're going to need to step up, show up, and grow up. Step up, meaning you're going to have to, you know, be the daughter that she, you know, brought you up to be. You're going to have to be there for her now. Your mother needs you. You got to show up in a big way. It's a crowded world out there. You're going to have to do something really amazing that's going to take you from making $55 an hour, which that's what I was making. I mean, which I was 55, rather, years old, making $10 an hour. Can so I just stop you and just say that again? You were 55 years old and you were making $10, $10 an, hour. an hour. I hope you're listening to this. Yeah, yes, go on. Yes. Sorry. Rick. No problem. No, no, that's huge. And I want people to get that because this was, I was in my midlife when this happened. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, the voice said, you're going to have to step up, show up in a big way, and you're going to have to grow up. The grow up is the out because mm -hmm. that's where you basically have to look at yourself as Michael Jackson is famous for saying, and was famous for saying, as a man or woman in the mirror and look at what's, what's right and what you need to kind of fix. And I had to take responsibility. Yeah. For being 55 years old, making $10 an hour. Why was I in that situation? I went to the best schools. I lived in the suburbs. My parents owned a chain of restaurants. So I was always had that entrepreneur blood in me. But for some reason, I was settling in life. I was stuck in a rug. You know, I, I wasn't depressed, but I didn't want more out of life. I was just kind of settling. So as we sat in that hospital, my sister Tracy and my son over here, uh, Blair, we all lived at the hospital for not a couple of days, but for three weeks, staying by my mom's side, being sure that everything was done right. Well, what I did, a little bit different from what my sister and my, when my son was going back and forth to New York, was during that time in the hospital, I would use the computers and I would try to figure out what can I do in a big way that was going to help me step up and show up and grow up. And then I heard this man here, Alex Mendozian, my number one male mentor. At that time, I didn't know Alex. I had paid for a course on payment plans called Teleseminar Secrets. Mm. And Alex said the quickest way to become an expert was to interview experts. Mm -hmm. And I knew I had a gift to get. I came from 20-something years in health. And so that was my hope. That was when I was able to see that gleaming light, the small little light that gave me my aha moment that told me, you can do this. You can use the power of your voice and your heartfelt message and go out there and change lives. So long story short, we, I ended up being at the hospital for three months with mom off and on. 
Mm-hmm. And during that time, I learned how to use the power of my voice. I learned how to be a talk show host. I learned how to create a podcast from my kitchen table, as you said earlier. And I learned how to really get good at asking great people to allow me the opportunity to interview. And uh, six weeks later, I launched my show, uh, Women Power, that's gone on to win two uh, multi-awards as award-winning host, uh, ended up on Careers from the Kitchen Table, another award-winning show. Um, also went to CNN and CBS and now on my own radio station called Amazing Women of Power and I've written many books and uh, teach people all over the world how to take their voice and change their life, make that U-turn, get out there and interview those heroes and sheroes that are important in your industry, important to your audience, and use it to create books and audio series and radio shows and web TV shows and really get your message out to the masses. That is an amazing story. I'm sure you will all agree. This is not the conventional story. I did say right at the start, this is a very unconventional um, path that she has taken. But I I know the answer to this, Raven, because you and I have spoken many times about this in your book. um, For those who don't know, there will be people sitting and listening to this thinking, yeah, I mean, this, this, this is a sort of breakthrough story, but really, how on earth did she go from earning $10 an hour to persuading people, who, that some of whom that, you know, I've, I've already highlighted? Mm-hmm. Okay. How did you actually manage that? How did you go from the $10 to, you, you said you got onto Alex Mendoza's mentoring program, which was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, how um... do you get people to say yes? I suppose That's a, a lot of people sitting there thinking about that because I know I did the yeah. first time I met you. I thought, well, how did how did she make that transition? In- I know, I know. And you know, sometimes I have to pinch myself. If as you look at my backdrop, you see Sherry Shepherd, you see yeah. Les Brown, um, you know, you see Russell Simmons. If I lean this way, you can see Brenda Bouchard, Brian Tracy, you know, Tilly from TLC, and that's Amazing. Lisa up there, all the way down, you know. And so um, um, here's the thing, you know, I just realized that, like I said, I had to step up, show up and and grow up. And what I noticed um, with the podcast is people were kind of interviewing each other and they were interviewing best-selling authors and stuff. But I noticed that no one in the business industry was interviewing the celebrities. So I made myself a list. Uh, Jane Kennedy, actress Jane Kennedy, uh, she was like one of the first African American sports women, mm-hmm. and Miss USA, and a lot of that beautiful. She was kind of like the Halle Berry back in the day. Mm-hmm. She was the first one I put on my list, and then I just made a list of you know Fran Drescher, Montel Williams, just different people that I would like to go out and interview. And then I sprinkled it in with business leaders like Les Brown and Jack Canfield, Mark Victor Hansen, people like that, Ali Brown. But then, you know, again, okay, these people don't know me. I'm not in the celebrity circle. Are they really going to say yes? Exactly my point. point? How did you get them to do that? That's your life. Absolutely. Basically, what I did, guys, to be honest, I just made the list. I did a vision board. I went and Googled their name. And I looked at what they had on there. I looked on there like at some of the other shows they've done. I listened to it. And I try to find that hot button, that sweet spot. And that's how I communicated with them as to why they should be on my show. So, for instance, if, if Russell Simmons just wrote a book about business and how to do a business and how he started his business, mm-hmm. then I would go to him and I say, look, I have this great show. It's called Careers from the Kitchen Table. It's for home business owners like yourself. You know, I read your book. Here's the thing. You got to tell them, I read your book. I read your article. I was on your website. You want to, you know, you want to let them know that you're not just reaching out to everybody. And in your book, in your book, Russell, you mentioned your six steps. And that third step where you talked about such and such and such, the minute I read that, I said, I have got to interview him. You are perfect for my audience because they need this. So you made it about them? Yes. You made it about them and you made that connection as to why they should come and be interviewed by you. Right. Here's you, forgive me, at that time, a complete nobody, managed to get all these individuals because you were able to make that connection and Mm -hmm. make it about them. It was a sort of win-win situation that you were creating in in that moment because... You wanted them, but they, they also needed and wanted you by the way you had um, uh, put yourself out there. Yeah, well, it's always what's in it 
for them. Yeah, I created this thing called the Icon Interview Formula about a year ago. Yeah. And this helps you to understand this. And I know you got the book, and so you yeah. know Perfect, that that's it, Because this is, this is what we were coming to. You've, you've just read my mind. Because this is, for those of you listening, this is the system that mm -hmm. uh, Raven uses. Go on, Raven. Sorry, I missed yeah. So I is investigate. Remember when I said I went to their website to see if they had any radio shows that they had been on, mm -hmm. or either I would Google Russell Simmons uh, uh, being interviewed on radio, podcasts, mm -hmm. YouTube, and I would go listen to the interview and see what they were passionate about. I would listen for when their voice cracked and I could tell that there was emotion in there. I would listen to where their voice raised and they got excited. I would listen to the things that they really went deep. In other mm -hmm. words, the interviewer asked a question, but that question meant so much to them. They didn't just give an on the surface answer. They went deep. And then I would look and see what books they have out, what charities, what causes. That's investigating. Now, here's what I teach my clients, as you know, is that I teach them to investigate before you ask for the interview. Most mm -hmm. people, they may do one thing, but they do most of it after they get the interview. Yeah. If you do this first, you will have a great connection because nine times out of 10, you won't be talking to that person, although that can happen. Mm -hmm. You can be talking to their assistant, their publicist and stuff. So when they know, when you mention to them the, the hot spots, the sizzling, juicy stuff, the stuff that they know means a lot to mm -hmm. the person that they're representing, you have made a deeper connection that that makes you stand out of more than just someone that just sending a loose email, mass emails, or making phone calls, hoping to land an interview. You see what I'm saying? It's Absolutely. A and then you want to own your platform. Now, this is where many uh, bloggers, radio hosts, podcasters, they drop the ball, even telesummit leaders like yourself and me. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to own your platform, meaning you have to sit in your posture, you have to, you know, elevate your voice, unleash the power of your voice, and you have to power up. Power That's up it. that voice, power up that attitude. And you can't go to them like you know, kind of like sounding like a little old mouse. You gotta, you know, talk mm -hmm. like you're on CNN, CBS, MSNBC, one of the major stations. Don't talk down and say I have a podcast, a periscope or anything. Don't talk it down. Now, even though those are nice buzzwords for us in business, it may not be the, the that's mm -hmm. not exciting enough maybe for Russell Simmons, the <laughs> friend Drescher that are usually used to doing mainstream radio. Now, people nowadays know more about that podcast and Facebook Live mm -hmm. than before. But when you come to them like you're, uh, you're, you're, you're broadcasting from CNN and CBS, even if it's your home studio, even if it's a telesummit, even if it's a podcast or a periscope, you will stand out. Mm. You will pop more because they can't say yes to everybody. And they want to know that they're with someone that stands in, in their power and use that power voice so they can shine. Lastly, you've got to get to the nitty gritty. You can't talk long. You can't share your story. You can't get too deep. You have to get to the nitty gritty because their time is precious. And that's our icon interview formula. If you just do that alone, you will find you'll get more yeses than no, especially the investigate part because that's one step of our irresistible ask. And it's not what you say, it's how you say it. That's why it's so important to follow those steps. Fantastic tips there. And I couldn't agree more with you. So many people approach potential, um, even prospects, or uh, host shows, um, interviewers, um, you know, will, will contact sort of potential speakers mm -hmm. and they won't have done the level of research required and then they wonder why they get blown off um, in, in the process. So we've now got to a stage where you are interviewing some amazing people. You've got a technique that you've, over time, shown us as the icon technique, but at the time you were developing it and you were, you, were, um, you know, sort of thin creating finesse around it, but you were getting some amazing names um, to say yes. Yeah, and they would just happen like one in a row, one in a row, one in a row. How you fantastic know, was, is that? Yeah, oh. I mean, it was, just a lot, it was a lot of yeses before I got to the no's. However, I did get no's. I definitely got no's. I was going to ask you, did you get no's? Someone was dripping on people, and eventually some of those no's became yes. You know, you've got to know there's a fine line between being persistent 
Mm -hmm. Add being a stalker. Don't yes, be a stalker. Absolutely. You got to do it on them, you know. And the way I would do that is I would be on their list. You mm -hmm. know, I would show up at events where they were events. I would be visible. I would, you know, I didn't then, but now you definitely can. You can retweet their things yeah. and stay on Facebook because when I was starting, social media wasn't that huge, mm -hmm. you know. I would pick up the receiver and give them a call every now and then. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would give them a call every now and then and I would say, hey, you know, I'm Raven. I said, did you get my email? You know, I'm the one that asked you a couple months ago and you were out of town, you know, and I told you I would reach out to you a couple months later. And I just want to know, is this better timing for mm -hmm. you to be one of my featured guests? Right. And you got to learn the language they talk. So you got to say things like featured guests. And then also I would um, tell them that, you know, I would love to have them on my show so that they, so that my listeners can hear all about their technique, all about whatever it was. Again, mm -hmm. you got to talk their language. You got to remember it's what's in it for them, not what's in it for us. So I dripped on them. Sometimes I would send videos. Uh, sometimes I would congratulate them if I heard that they had a baby or anything new or just reach out and say, hey, I was just thinking about you. I know I'm on your list and you were talking about you and your family was going to trip. Did you guys have a great time? Great, great. Well, I hope you share. We look forward to sharing, seeing some of your pictures in your newsletter. You see what I'm saying? So I Again, just, research though. Yes. It's all based on research and, and touching them on the points that are relevant to them. Absolutely. So we have a picture forming now in our minds about this person who's gone from the $10 to a kitchen table um, business where you're getting some really good connections. Mm -hmm. Was it paying? Was it paying? Was it paying you to have, were you getting some revenue through the door? Okay. At first, no. At first, and this is, I'm glad you brought this up because remember, I was supposed I have a voice inside me to step up, show up, and grow yeah. up. And one of those stepping up was making money. Yeah. You know, here's the thing that happens to a lot of Telesummit people and, and, you know, people that are doing podcasts and stuff. We really enjoy our shows. We really enjoy our interviews. And we forget that it's not a hobby. It's either our business or an extension of our business. So it took me a while to get on a money path. I started doing, like most of my clients, enjoying what I did. And I forgot my why <laughs> and that's why i'm asking that question because yeah. so many of my clients will often say that they have a passion and what i mean i'm always encouraging people to start a business that they are passionate about because if you've got the passion you can get past most things but sometimes passion doesn't pay on its own you've got to do something over and above that to get some money in you know coming in so i'm really pleased you said that give us an idea raven from that moment in hospital I'm just trying to give people an idea of the timeline. Timeline. Mm -hmm. So you're sitting in the in the hospital. You have weeks in that awful, awful ICU with your mum and the uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At this point, are researching. I'm, I'm understanding. You come out. You realise you've got to step up. You start to make contact with these individuals, and you start to build on that and get those interviews. How long before it started to pay or how long before you started to realize that it wasn't paying and you had to do something different? Um, it, probably, it almost took a year. Right. Actually, a friend of mine, uh, not a friend, she's a friend of mine now, but I didn't know her. Um, someone had mentioned me at a conference mm -hmm. and uh, to her because of my show Women Power. Yeah. And she said, you should be on her show. You know, it's all about empowering women. And her name uh, was Carla Carter. And so Carla emailed me and she said, you know, I heard from you from, from Heshi Siegel and mm. I want to find out more about your show and can we connect? And then she said, by the way, by the way, I'm just curious because I don't see anything on your website, any packages or anything. How are you making your money? Ah, interesting. And then I start, and I was like, I can make money from this. <laughs> you know? And so I connected with her and she's a, she's an investment. And, um, and she told me, she said, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta put something on here on your site, put some packages together. Yeah. So I created commercial packages and things. I also invested at that time. I wasn't making $200 hmm. uh, a month, but I invested on a, um, a, co a limo coaching program that, um, Alex had right. where he, 
would coach you for 10, I mean, for about 15 to 25 minutes, however long it took him to go from his house to the airport, mm -hmm. and you paid $200. And I remember scrounging up and asking friends to loan me that money. And then I talked to him, and he said, you know, you're doing a great job on interviews, but you got to turn this into profit. Yeah. And so after talking to him and Carla, I realized what was missing was I was treating this like it was a hobby, not a business. Yes. So I began to incorporate the word entrepreneur mm -hmm. at the end or the word preneur at the end so as right. you know you have my book talk show magic i talk about the talk show preneur yes. or the interviewpreneur and if you think preneur it will help you have the mindset of an entrepreneur and it will push you passion in a hobby to a business because having a show doing interviews for telesummits if it's not your direct business like it is mine mm -hmm. it's an extension of your business as far as the marketing side so you yeah. have to look at first of all what's your why mm -hmm. be clear of your why be clear of your intentions some people's intentions is to build a list and it's not to make money mm -hmm. but as long as you clear it clear of your intentions and you see that your list is growing and growing and growing that's fine I'm very adamant, as you know, yeah. about people making money with yeah. it because there's so much money to be made. Yeah. You can create CDs from this. Mm. You can create audio uh, audio series from it. Yeah. You know, there's a client of mine named Lorena. She did a radio show. She did four interviews, me included, mm -hmm. and Jack Canfield. And what she did is she turned it into an audio series. Mm -hmm. And she also had it transcribed in a book. Yeah. You can put, like I do on my career from the kitchen table, we're just getting ready to release our fifth edition. And what, what, what I did is I put some of the top people I interviewed and in the chapter under Raven Grills, the gurus, mm -hmm. then I went out there and I sold opportunities for people to put their story in a book, hook their wagon to the people that I've been blessed to interview. And I charged them four ninety seven, and we put 55 in there. So I began to, um, at paying me four ninety seven. I began yeah. to stretch, think out the box, and act like a talk showpreneur, an interviewpreneur, and not have any more hobbies. So check your mindset, check your why, and create a strategy. I call it an ISSP interview. I'm sorry, ISPP interview success profit plan. Perfect. So you, you want this to be successful. That's why we put the word in it and profit plan your roadmap to your money, to your multiple streams of money. Cause I just showed you different ones that you can do. Yeah. Absolutely fabulous. So now let's bust some myths here because there'll be people sitting and listening to this. I'm sure thinking, you know, um, I'm not as confident as Raven as a speaker, I couldn't do this. If Even if they were thinking about doing this, maybe they're just thinking about generally going out there and starting a business, let alone a talk show business. But I'm not as confident as Raven. I can, I can just picture people's mind, you know, ticking away in this way. What would yeah. you say? I would say you don't know the you see in Raven now. You don't know Raven then. You don't know that Raven myself was an emotionally abused child. Right. They grew up to be a emotionally abused adult because you get comfortable with the environment that mm -hmm. you have. Mm -hmm. I love my mom and dad. They're both gone now. My mother passed away six years after all that happened, but she lived long enough to see me interview these great people. I but they were you. very strict back then. Mm -hmm. You know, they were a product of their product. Yeah. And which we all are. So I don't blame them, but that just you know they wanted me to be a great kid, a good kid. And they were very strict. But for me, it was, you know, it was a little bit of physical abuse, you know, getting whippings, you know, when you were younger. But that's the way they were raised. I mean, their parents and, and their parents' parents were from slavery days. So nice. that, that's all they knew. Nice. And that and that and my self-esteem, I never felt good enough. I believe that that's probably why people ask me all the time now, you know, you know, you got a magazine, you got your own radio station. Yes, I went from having one show that I created in the hospital to having a radio station now reaching 4.5 million listeners in 157 countries. I have a magazine. I have the only all uh, radio host speaking production company. And I just invented my hat wraps uh, that <laughs> wow. working on getting. BBC. And I think the reason that I'm able to blossom like that is because I'm making up for all that time that I felt lesser than. Yes. And so what I hope my story does is inspire you that my I started at 55 years old from an ICU unit of a hospital. 
I just celebrated this past April 10 years of broadcasting. Well it's, done. Congratulations. And I've been able to, you know, turn that, that, that radio show creation from a hospital, launching the first show into a kitchen table to a, a multimedia Raven International Media Empire with all this other stuff. But it was because I got hungry, as Les Brown said, for success. I created systems and strategies and formulas. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, really implement everything I learned. I invest. You heard me talk about I invested $200 when I wasn't even making $200. I am quick to invest into, sure, I got my, my, my free books and audios mm. like we all start. Start anywhere. But then I realized, you know, if I wanted people to pay me $200, I better be paying somebody $200. If I wanted people to be paying me a couple thousand, I better be investing a couple thousand. If I want people to pay me or invest in, me, in their they're training with me for 25, 50, 75, 100,000. I better be doing the same. I had to yeah. get past those excuses of what I didn't have and start asking myself, what will happen if I don't do this? Yes, absolutely. What's the impact of not doing as well as yes. the impact of doing? Absolutely, a fantastic point here. Okay, so. We've talked about some of the other myths because you've talked about how, you know, how you've overcome the no. So I don't want to go back to that, but um, I want to ask you, a lot of people will be sitting there also making some key mistakes. So in your opinion, what are some of the key mistakes that they are also making? Either in generally interviewing or as show hosts. Yeah, we're talking about both, you know. Yeah. Um, or even if you're just doing a telesummit, because some yeah. people don't want to go to show calls, or even if you just want to do an Any audio form of interview. Or membership yeah. and using these skills. Um, the, some of the biggest mistakes I find is, um, you brought it earlier, you know, people want to do what they're passionate about, but for some reason they don't, they can't coordinate the fact that even though they're passionate about something, they're supposed to make money from it. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, remember that this is either a direct a business uh, that you're doing on this, whether interviewing or having your show or doing telesummits or creating all this series, or it's an extension of your business. Yeah. I believe you need to make money from it and it's okay. The other thing is people stay in learning mode a lot and not in yes. enough implementation mode. You know, yeah. implement, implement, implement. And the other thing is you just have to put your big girl and big guy draws on and go out there and ASK, ask for what you want. Because if you don't ask for what you want, you will not get it. Another big mistake I'll say is people will go halfway in. They'll stick their toe in it, mm. and in the water, so to speak, and not the full foot in there. So you they, you know, they, they stop too quick. They stop when they're three foot from the goal, as Napoleon Hill says. And by yeah. the way, I was blessed to interview his grandson, uh, Dr. J.B. Hill. Fabulous. And Earl Nightingale's widow, who is a good friend of mine, Diana Nightingale. And none of this would have came about, guys, if I didn't push past my pain, push past uh, the uncertainty, and not try to dot the I's and cross the T's. It's okay to fail forward. Yeah. I, I talk about don't wait to be great, do it now. I think too many of us, we are waiting to be at perfect, and this is why I'm okay to tell you where I was. I'm a true introvert. If you see me and I'm not on air, I'm probably the biggest introvert you know. No but one's going to believe that. <laughs> I know nobody does believe it, but I am until they see me out. Yeah. You probably also don't believe that at the age of, I guess it was 48, somewhere between 48 and 50, I was in a closet looking at a gun. Oh, wow. Trying to decide whether my life was worth living trying to decide whether I should leave my then husband that was abusive or should I just check out? Goodness. That's me. the raven you don't know. No, this is the raven you see. Absolutely. Now, but that was because of investments. That's because of being hungry for success. That's because of knowing that there was something bigger for me. There was a purpose. It just took that moment for mom to be at the hospital. Yeah. And it wasn't. And you know why? Because I never could figure out if I was worthy enough. It was okay for me to settle. So my why was not big enough for me. But when I see my mama in that hospital, in the ICU unit with tubes around her, my why became being there for my mom, mm -hmm. stepping up, showing up, and growing up. So if you're not moving fast enough, 
If you're not doing, you know, you're just kind of just settling, check your why. And if yeah. you can't do it for you, figure out why, what is your why? What mm -hmm. is it? Who can you do it for? Can you do it for your kids? Can you do it for your parents? Can you do it for having a legacy to pass on to others? Check your why. Absolutely. What fabulous uh, tip there. Okay. So we are nearing the end and you have been very generous with your time. And I have some fabulous takeaways that I just want to summarize for our audience. Because okay. Awesome. Have some gems, some absolute gems here that I don't want to lose. First of all, I don't think anyone is going to be left with any doubt about the fact that there is no such thing as an age limit to get your personal breakthroughs. And I did, I've known Raven a little while now, but I, I did not know the true value of that breakthrough in terms of what you've just said, the, how low you had fallen in terms of your personal um, issues uh, when you talked about, you know, the gun, etc. But the fact that you have overcome all of that and you started at 55, I mean, should be, you know, no such thing as an age uh, limit, as I said, uh, for, for uh, breaking through. The second thing is what Raven said, and it totally resonates with me. And those who are, have been with me a while will know that I say this over and over again, which is about stepping up. But you know, things don't come easily to anyone. And even those who come on this show who are eight-figure uh, entrepreneurs will tell you if they're being honest, and they are generally honest on this show, that actually they, they've had to work pretty hard on it. You know, once they break through that barrier, then things start to get a little bit easier. But the mm -hmm. work up towards it means that you have to put the work in. And what you, we heard from um, Raven was actually the tip that you, you invest in yourself. Again, those who know me will know that I'm constantly saying you, your business will benefit a hundred times each time you invest in yourself. The more yeah. you invest in yourself, the more you will invest in your business. And what she said was she did not even earn $200, but she begged and borrowed to get that $200 and see where she is now from her first mentor. The third thing I picked up was this issue about stopping too early, giving up too early. And, you know, I don't underestimate what the, um, some of the listeners will be going through or have been through. It's a difficult road sometimes. It's a constant battle. You get, you know, two, two, two steps forward, 10 steps back sometimes. And you just think, I can't do this. Just persevere because, and commit to the process, as Raven said, because, you know, there are some gains along the way. And then mm -hmm. finally, the, the thing she said, which totally resonated, was um, having a plan. Raven has got the icon that she referred to. She also referred to the ISPP, if I remember correctly, and just remind them what that was because I've forgotten to write it down. In <laughs> Absolutely. That's your interview success profit plan. Keyword yeah. being success. You're going at it to be successful. That's your intentions. And uh, it's a profit plan. You're going to make money, honey. Absolutely. So don't make, not, make it not just passion, but make it profit passion and profit, which is the mm -hmm. ultimate success uh, formula. So before we end, I know that listeners, um, you know, have, have benefited hugely from what you've had to say today. And I'm sure they're going to be totally inspired by your very unconventional story. But in addition to giving you the last word, I also want to share with the, the audience that you very kindly agreed to give away uh, an electronic copy of this wonderful new book of yours called Talk Show Magic. And yes. you can get hold of Raven's book at talkshowmagic.com. Just go over there and you will be able to access your free electronic copy of the book. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Raven, so go, go check that out. Again, that's talkshowmagic.com. And, and, you know, it is going to show you how to unleash the magic within you and be an irresistible host and, you know, be able to have the mindset of the talk show or interviewpreneur instead of and turn it from a hobby to a business. The icon interview formulas in there, worksheets in there. We talk about the triple threat interview and, and all that. So it's a lot of good strategies and tips that I put together that help me, uh, even how to get testimonials and things like mm -hmm. that. 
it's, oh as I said at the start, it most certainly is jam-packed. I can assess to that for sure. <laughs> so, Raven, any final words you want to share with the listeners before we go? Yes, I do want to share with the listeners that, like you said, it doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are. You can be whatever you want to be. You just have to remember that if it's your dream, it's meant for you to have it. I think Napoleon Hill said, uh, the mind of a man or woman that can conceive or believe you can't achieve. And just want to share this a little bit with you. You heard me mention that I have an invention. Well, you know, that happened this year and I turned 65 this year. Hmm. So you see two major things happen in 55. I never thought I would invent anything. And this is a patent invention, true life invention. It started from me loving hats and carrying a purse full of hats. Everywhere I go, <laughs> I want to know that's and that's the actual picture. And this was just one year ago. Me and my husband would go to conferences and conferences. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing, the problem I had is I had a favorite hat that the band came off. And I love this hat because it tilted right and all this. Then I had my white hat that all those women love, white fedoras. Mm -hmm. And it would always get dirty. So those were my three problems. So I created this thing called a hat wrap. It's a wrap that goes on a hat. And it took this hat from like this to this. <laughs> this was an idea that happened last year around this time. Um, and, and I think it was October, November. I met someone that knew a, a seamstress. I mm -hmm. told them about that I, I had an idea. I didn't tell them what. I met the seamstress. We teamed up. And a few months later, we were able to invent this. Now, um, it, we're gonna, we have a whole collection of wow. 20 different hat wraps. We're talking to someone on Home Shopping Network. It's not a hat, it's a wrap. It's Raven's custom fedora, not a hat, it's a wrap. And I hope that inspires you. This happened this year, just from me dealing with the problem, and it will take your any hat and make it a new hat. And then whenever you want your old hat back, you just simply take it off, and there you are. <laughs> Wonderful. So proving to us that at 65, not only is she a very successful talk show host, and in the 10 years she's moved to that level, but now at 65, a, a booming entrepreneur in the hat market as well. Yes, <laughs> her. Yay! And I went from carrying that suitcase to now I just put them in here and yeah. I have a whole week of different, I can have a different look every week just from putting these on to my so. Amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. I believe it. What a I lovely it. So write me and tell me about it. Story <laughs> to end on. Absolutely wonderful. So it just remains for me to say a huge thank you to you for being thank on the you. show. You did a great Very job. I'm so proud of her. I'm like the, the mom just standing over here smelling. Oh, her. Thank you. And for sharing your inspirational stories with us. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on our show today, Raven. Thank you so, so much. And hopefully you'll Everyone, come back and do you. more. Absolutely. Tell us how your new venture is um, progressing in the future. Absolutely. I want to just say, everyone, go out there and do it. Listen to her. She's got <laughs> some great masters. Listen to her, not just on this series, but on her weekly show. And just remember, if you can dream it and believe it, you can achieve it. Don't wait to be great. Do it now. Okay. I have no more words to follow that. Thank you so much, Raven. <laughs> <laughs>